Okay, I think we're done here then. I think we have to go back to the main hall. Zesty boy. Okay, so that was the far room. Outstanding. He returned teacup saucer and picked up the orb as one with an apple. He pondered the strange happenings. Interesting. Alright. I like this little safe area. Don't forget your bag, Daniel. I won't, Herbert. There is no shame in using a parasol in the desert. As it happens, it's imperative to your survival. But it looks ridiculous. The shame will hurt much less than dying, I assure you. Pat Pat. Has he had experience with dying before? Alright, so yeah, we'll clear this upper room and then the guest room. Then cold mist brushes face stepped outside. London weather it could be cruel, but kind of cruelty he could handle. <clears throat> my journal is gone. What would they want with my journal? What could they want with our journal? 2nd of July. 1839. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. Hmm. We got a crowbar. Sorry, I'm just munching on a cookie right now. <laughs> Third of July, 1839. Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, we covered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? What are those pieces in the drawing room? Crowbar. Oh, I broke the crowbar. The key. Please let it be here. Fourth of July, eighteen thirty nine. It's done. The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. 
It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. A factory. <laughs> Isn't there supposed to be a key here? Okay. Bad guy. We hide. Shh, don't let him hear you. No matter what he whispers, do not take the mask off. Okay, the door is open. Surprise! Is that the door of him leaving? I don't hear growling anymore. Outstanding. Oh yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything here. We're gonna peek though. Oh well. I tried so hard to... Alright, well I just wanted to be vigilant. Hello? Ooh! Oh, thank God, there it is. I guess it is a good place to hide it then. Machine room key. Nice. Posters are the paintings hiding stuff. Should we have been looking at that this whole time? Crazy. All right, cool. Well, we got uh, the machine room key. I pinched heavily, trying to keep bells from screaming. Medicine cabinet overturned, laying cabinet floor. He reached for broken glass and grabbed all the sedatives he could find. I think this is just, uh, oh, the study. Is this is another separate room. Very well. They flipped through the Book of Monarchs, looking for etchings and counted nine different kings from all over Europe had been depicted with an orb resting in their hands. Is this the Eden's apple type thing from, uh, what's it called? Assassin's Creed. There's a dog barking. <clears throat> Letter regarding the discovery of an orb. To my most trusted students and friends of Joanne Ware, the most remarkable things happened as I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer. I finally found one of the orbs I have been looking for for the last 20 odd years. It is an inexplicable... Er inexplicable yeah as the heliodromus described in the Hort hortus conclusus it was Ooh, sorry it was as it was told about in an underground matriarch temple crowned with an unearthly artifact the orb was big enough to fill my cupped hands and the texture was smooth and jagged the color was washed while wow, rich contrast is not enough to describe its nature. It was an impossibility, an artificial paradox captured within stone. I was staying at a nearby village called Altstad, investigating one of the antiquated trails when I found, or when I finally found the cavern, I went inside, studied, I could verify the truth to these enigmatic artifacts. They were real. As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of my life, but it has also become my greatest fear. As I entered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my courtesy, I did the best to fight these instincts and fetch the ore from its place. I scrambled out from the chamber and into the woods. I could sense something was following me. It bayed loudly as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. 
I made my way to a nearby ravine where I stumbled upon some men fishing in the lake. I tried to warn them as I passed, but unfortunately they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard their cries of pain echoing through the valley, I felt such a tremendous sense of relief, thinking I would be spared. Suddenly, a blue streaming shimmering light engulfed me, and the colors of the forest were washed away from my eyes. I kept running through the bleak surroundings, the trees had turned charcoal, black with leaves of cinder, the ground was covered in murky water. I pressed on through the drenched lands as the glowing embers gave way to the rising wind and rained on me. Uh, I could hear pleading screams in the distance, and I joined in as pain and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground gasping for air. This certainly must sound strange, but I had carried, or I had been carried miles away across the Alps to a grassy field outside Giona. The guardian had taken the orb from me, but I still until this day i fear its return sometimes i lay awake night listening for the howling cry heard in the forest it has been nearly a decade since that day has been able to write about the incident the last time we spoke to you about your interest in ongoing research into mythic orbs and i realized i owed you the truth about my visit to altstad your friend and mentor heinrich cornelius agriba Huh. This be. Yo, we got a cross. He said this shouldn't be. To be or not to be, you know, man. That's not really the question here today. Alright, Jesus. Guard the door. Jesus. Oh, it's another Stefano. Is there anything in this room? Oh, there's a chest. Awesome. That was a waste of time. Alright, Jesus. Good old Jesus. Ooh, there's a doggo. <clears throat> Canis lupus familiares. After a short study, it is clear that the agitation found among humans can be found in dogs. Fear, pain, induces stress, which seem to trigger indigenous response, causing the animal to burst with energy. I believe the catalyst is produced in the brain. It's difficult to determine exactly and what it is, but I can sense it. It reeks of cosmic gen genesis. There is an inherent problem in harvesting this energy, since the creature is bound to die from the exercise. I refine this process of torture to enable any real work to be done. More experience must be formed, but it seems that only human beings are able to produce the amount necessary and might be able to produce or their ability to appreciate the severity of the process that ultimately augments their experience of terror. Nani? Oh, doggo. That's the old man himself. Creepy. Oh, hello. That's what we wanted to see, right, boys? He's literally got some skulls in his closet. If 
fire. Oh. Disturbing. That, that's not the way it was when we first looked at it. Oh, hey, more paper. 1658, January 9th. Further disappointment. The antiquarian's latest findings yielded nothing. I'm still unable to grasp the inner workings of life and its relation to the power I sense within it. I shall pursue more books on the subject, but I suspect it will be in vain since no research has been made in my particular interest. I must attempt to fill that void myself. Clearly, humans emanate more of that energy I seek, but I hope animals will suffice as they'll prove less hassle to acquire. Isn't that nice? He's just doing animal torture because human torture is too hard to cover up. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> 